Today on OC News, a deadly shooting affecting the San Antonio and Austin community. The California Faculty Association of CSUF joined Cal Poly Pomona in the strike for higher wages. And a CSUF alumni making an impact for the Pacifica dance team. All that and more coming up on OC News. This just yes, in. Now in tech news, the first responder on the There's been a lot of collaborative efforts. I feel blessed to be here in Fullerton. Brought to you by the Broadcast, Broadcast Journalism students, students at the Cal State Fullerton. OC News starts right now. Hello and welcome to OC News. I'm Katherine Nostrati. And I'm Olivia Morales. Thank you for joining us for our final show of OC News for this semester. Another school shooting this afternoon, and this one happened at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas campus. Three people are dead after a gunman stormed the University of Nevada, Las Vegas at 11.53 a.m. University police responded to a report of shots fired. At 11.59 a.m., University police confirmed that there was an active shooter on campus. Shortly after, there were reports of multiple victims and students were advised to evacuate the area. At around 12.32 p.m., Las Vegas police reported that the suspect was found and was deceased. These kinds of shootings hit too close to home. When places of learning turn into bloodshed, students and faculty here on campus reacted to the news of yet another school shooting. I hadn't heard anything about it until right now, actually. I feel like that is something that I worry about because I know it is in the media a lot that there's mass shootings everywhere. And I feel like personally, it's something really scary when you come to a campus where there's 40,000 students and it is an open campus and anybody can come on campus. So I feel like it's something that I really do worry about and it's something that's just really scary when you think about how you come to school for an education and it's something they have to worry about. You have to worry about risking your life when you come to school. I see how there's like there's no fences here, so it is kind of easy for people to come up uh, on the campus, and maybe, maybe build uh, some sort of border or uh, and recruit more people to come and uh, drive around campus. You know, keep an eye on the students. I feel like I would feel scared um, to even come on campus. And typically, I do feel safe on this campus, so I would feel a little bit confused and I don't know how I would handle the situation. I feel like maybe doing like, maybe making the school more secure, for example, like using student cards or IDs to enter the school to make sure that they're actually a student and not a person from outside. So I feel scared, especially if I was on campus, I feel like devastated, scared, terrified if that happened. If they're short on staff, I think they should recruit more um, people, especially college students that want to work. I feel that like that would, be a better opportunity for everybody and more safety. Faculty strikes continue at various CSU campuses. Members of the CSUF California Faculty Association supported members of Cal Poly Pomona earlier this week on the picket line. We go to our reporter Miguel Castaneda for the latest. CFA strikes continue throughout the CSU system. We're supporting Pomona, you know, I'm at Cal State Fullerton, so I did, I'm on the bargaining team, but I did not help organize it. I'm a bus captain, yay! <laughs> Members of the CFA of Cal State Fullerton have joined in solidarity with the faculty of Cal Poly Pomona in their ongoing battle for better pay. Okay, we're doing our contract reopener. We're working on last contract. We had four asks. Uh, we asked for salary, which they responded to at 4% initially and then 5%. Uh, we asked for parental leave. We asked for a semester off for parental leave. They offered us 6%. We got an illegal message to our faculty, staff, and students saying they offered 8%, but uh, no time did they respect that. We also asked for relief from work, overwork, I should say, from workload. They ignored that as well. And we also asked for help and safety, which was also ignored. But they did ask to increase parking fees. Now, this strike is not just for the faculty alone. Some of the faculty members have explained that they are also pushing for students' rights. As you can see from a sign like this, it reads, faculty working conditions are student learning conditions. And so if students have concerns about it, they should talk to their faculty. 
um, ask their faculty what are their plans uh, for, for any given day. And you know that um, uh, classes proceed in lots of different ways all the time. Um, we are no longer, and this is like, if you think about good things that came out of the pandemic, right, we are a lot more flexible. We are a lot more nimble than we were before. There is a possibility no deal is made by the start of the spring semester. If that is the case, could classes really be canceled? I'm going to try not to impact the class and negatively in any way, but I am going to support the union in terms of uh, picketing and things of that nature, but um, hopefully it doesn't come to that. I mean, hopefully, hopefully it gets resolved before that, but I, I would support the union and if there is no agreement, then that might mean that missing some classes. If you have questions or concerns about your courses next semester, make sure you contact your professors for the latest updates. This is Miguel Casaniela, OC News. Former House Speaker Kevin McCarthy is resigning from Congress by the end of this year. According to an opposing editorial written by McCarthy for the Wall Street Journal, McCarthy said he will be departing from the House in order to serve America in new ways. After being ousted from his role as House Speaker by a faction of his own party earlier this year, speculation arose as to whether McCarthy would seek re-election or leave the House. McCarthy also said he still has plans to be politically involved and continue to recruit the country's best and brightest to run for elected office. A suspect was taken into custody yesterday after a shooting spree that took place throughout San Antonio and Austin, Texas. Six dead and three wounded after a violent shooting spree on Tuesday. The violent series of events started in the morning and extended into the evening. It was initially unclear if the attacks were all connected when the suspect was taken into custody. It is expected that the, the suspect will remain in custody while he's awaiting trial. A house in Virginia erupts in flames? Is CSUF prepared for an earthquake? And was 2023 the hottest year ever? Find out after the break. I don't think that many kids in my son's school even do it. He makes fun of his friend who vapes. He would never try it. Soccer. She's on the honor roll. She's just on the tape. No way. No way. No way. No way. My kid would never vape. Get your head out of the cloud. Today, nearly 8,000 kids will start vaping. Maybe even yours. Learn about the dangers at talkaboutvaping.org. Worried about your friend but don't know how to reach out? You can say how while you will get a fake tattoo. You can ask with an app if it works for you. You can chat with them in VR. It's all good if you think you should check in. Yeah, you should. Whatever, whatever, whatever gets you talking. Reach out to a friend about their mental health. Whatever, whatever, whatever gets you talking. Learn how you can help at SeizeTheAwkward.org. An earthquake and aftershock hit Orange County earlier this week. Reporter Adam Garcia has the story on the lack of preparation here at Cal State Fullerton. On Monday evening, there was a 3.5 magnitude earthquake near Cal State Fullerton at 8.09 p.m., where the epicenter was only a mile east from Fullerton. People reported shaking from in Anaheim at Disneyland and in Tustin. No damage or injuries were immediately reported, and there have been no reports of any additional aftershocks. And I was presenting, and I really almost didn't feel anything, but it was rather like a, a sway. Earthquakes could go like this, right? But this time it, it kind of was like a sway. And I remember because everyone was just all of a sudden looked up and like looked at each other. So it was actually kind of scary. This sudden earthquake shows that we still do have earthquakes in California, and it shows how unprepared people are when it comes to natural disasters. I don't really think about that. I just live my day-to-day -day life, and if a natural disaster did strike, I'd definitely, like, die or something. 
Don't forget, guys, government officials recommend you to go under a desk or table. Don't forget to hold on if an earthquake happens while you are in class. My name is Adam Garcia with OC News, reporting back to you in the studio. Warm temperatures are still here. Our weatherman Nathan Glendinning is in the studio with the latest. Thanks guys. As we enter the month of December, we are experiencing temperatures 10 degrees warmer than the normal month average. Let's take a look at the current weather here in Fullerton. It was a beautiful day today with a high of 75. It is currently 66 out right now and there will be a low of 52 tonight. So dress warm if you are going out. Now let's take a look at the rest of the week. The next two days we'll see temperatures in the high 60s and Friday we'll have a chilly low of 47. As we head into the weekend, we will see the temperatures rise. Saturday will be the best day to get out of the house as it will be sunny with a high of 75. Sunday will be a little bit warmer at 77, but it will be mostly cloudy throughout the day. It will begin to cool off at the beginning of next week as Monday we will see a high of 72. Speaking of warmer temperatures, scientists have reported that 2023 will be officially the hottest year on record. Every month since June has been the hottest month on record, and scientists believe this is due to the combined effect of an El Nino and human-caused climate change. They also found out that this year's global temperature will be nearly 35 degrees warmer than pre-industrial levels. Hopefully, as we turn the calendar year, we start to see those temperatures go down. That is it for weather. Back to you guys in the studio. Thank you, Nathan. A huge explosion destroys a house in Arlington, Virginia. Police were investigating a man who had fired a flare gun multiple times from the inside of his house on Monday night. According to the Arlington County Police Chief Andy Penn, the resident James Wu was presumed dead. He was known for being a conspiracy theorist. There was no ongoing threat to the nearby community. Videos of the house exploding have been going viral on sp social media platforms. That's a little too much fire for me and a little scary. <laughs> California Governor Gavin Newsom has canceled the public annual Christmas tree lighting at the Capitol amidst planned pro-Palestine protests. According to an announcement by Newsom, a pre-recorded virtual ceremony will be released later to today at 6 p.m. California Highway Patrol barricaded most of the Capitol building's west side lawn where the tree is located with several no trespassing signs. Originally, 92nd annual California State Capitol tree lighting was planned to be in person with a concert performance and business stands. However, Newsom said the change to a virtual ceremony is due to the continuous protests along the across the country that impact the safety of events of all scales and the safety of the participating guests. I had the chance to talk with members of the Titan Sport Network and witness the magic that goes behind the scenes for Fullerton's live sports. Here's my story. The people that I worked with, you know, they're really cool. They really made me feel, you know, like a family here. Senior Julius Choi is a technical director for the Titan Sport Network. He maintains the equipment such as the computers, soundboards, and control boards. His favorite part of the job is managing the interns who do most of the work. I, I was also in their shoes too. So yeah, basically, you know, as a leader, you know, I'm trying to help them help help these interns with the best of my ability. And yeah, um, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you know, I always tell them, feel free to send me a DM or talk to me when I'm inside here in this office. Julius clearly cares for the interns. Oh, hey, uh, Catherine, can you give me a hand real quick? Sure. Yeah, sure. Uh, can you just sit on this chair and see that little graphic right here? Just click on that right side. Perfect. And the interns notice his efforts. He has been a big helping hand. On, on introducing the interns of what this uh, what this internship brings to us, um, he has he has definitely emphasized on uh, how to do camera work, how to work on replay uh, graphics. He has helped me a lot tremendously. I develop a lot of skill because of him. He has been uh, a great educator for me, and overall his impact has been as shown. As interns like Ortega continue to work within TSN, 
they recognize just how much of an impact it's having for their career. The more you know, the more you're valuable. And so that has been a huge factor here. Not only the, are you great with camera, but can you also work different cameras? Are you able to work uh, within the camera? Are you able to change the setting? Are you able to do replay? Are you able to work replay properly? Are you able to do graphics, direct, uh, technical direct? Is a lot of versatility, and you know, it, develop a, uh, it has developed a lot of your knowledge here. You learn a lot. Tim Jackson, Assistant Athletic Director of Broadcasting, is giving students real-world experience. They got a great supervisor. <laughs> But no, seriously, I think it's, it, again, I think they learn to appreciate everything that goes into broadcasting. Um, you don't necessarily have to wait till you're a professional, and you can li literally do it here. And you have a lot of creative freedom, so if you're putting together good features and stuff, we'll put it on ESPN+, Plus, which is a national platform. For students that were in Julius' shoes and are interested in joining Titan Sport Network, visit the CSUF Communication Internships page for more information. For OC News, I'm Kazra Nasretti. Many people are familiar with dr Japanese drums, also known as taiko, but not many get the chance to play. Connor Alakaya went behind the scenes with an Orange County, Orange County taiko group. That was the opening to Seishun Taiko's Matsuri or Festival set. Seishun is a collegiate taiko group made up of students from many colleges, including CSUF, UCI, and CSU Long Beach. They practice weekly in order to prepare for performances while being in sync is key. While some members have been playing taiko for many years, other members are entirely new to the instrument. Seishun was founded in 2022 by Aaron Hayashida, Kelly Yada, and Maya Shimizu. Well, I think that taiko helps me reconnect with my cultural heritage as a Japanese, not citizen, but just a Japanese heritage. You see, I'm a Yonsei, Japanese, American, but there are others in the group who are maybe Sansei, Yonsei. That just means third generation, fourth generation. That may seem far removed from a natural born Japanese citizen, but as a Japanese American, I can now reconnect with my heritage through taiko. Taiko is unique in that songs are taught in a spoken language rather than on sheet music. Seishun Taiko practice here at the Orange County Buddhist Church and will be at the CSUF Nikkei Student Union's Mini Matsuri or Mini Festival this Thursday, which is actually just tomorrow. It's a mix between the music portion and the performance. It's not, we're not just hitting drums, we're moving, we're dancing. Sometimes you jump from drum to drum, go across the stage, even those who aren't playing are going to the audience. They have their own little tambourines or percussion instruments. We have small drums, we have shime drums, we have these large drums right here as well. So it's a huge mix of many different types of performances. When playing in sync, the drums are so loud they can be heard across the parking lot. Seishun plays a mix of traditional taiko songs from Japan, as well as songs written more recently in Southern California. From the Orange County Buddhist Church, OC News, Connor Alakaya. A dance champion here at CSUF is changing lives. Beyonce and Tw Taylor Swift's songs are helping hearts all around the world. And a Joe Flacco sighting in 2023? We got the news. Stay right there. We're all just trying to keep things running for those who rely on us. That's why we don't have time to be sick with the flu. We don't have time for delays. We don't have time for spells. Next. We don't have time for setbacks. Let's be real. Getting the flu shot? Helps you fight the flu. Get a flu shot for yourself and those around you too. Um, can I get the now bar please? One dollar. Have a good one. Got it. Hey, what's going on? Hey. Let me get a now bar. Sure. One dollar. Appreciate 
Welcome back to OC News. This week was filled with a lot of action in the world of sports. We go to our sports reporter, Jose Flores, to tell us more. One last time, I'm here to provide you with some sports, specifically some football. Both LA, te oh, both LA teams played on Sunday, so let's just start with the Chargers, shall we? Let's do it. Chargers taking on the Patriots in New England. And it was so, it's going to be a so exciting game, such an exciting game. So many highlights. I'm ready. We're all pumped. It's over. No highlights. The, the Chargers scored six points in a win in the most disgusting, hideous, atrocious game of football I have ever seen played. You know what? We're not doing the Chargers. Come back. Come back. We're not doing the Chargers. The char there's not enough words. There's not enough time on this broadcast for me to talk about the Chargers. So we're not even going to do it, folks. Brandon Staley and the Chargers, that's another day. Let's move on to a team that actually played football on Sunday. Let's talk about the Rams, shall we? Let's do a Rams. And who is it? The Browns at SoFi Stadium. Let's go. And you'll never guess who's under center. No, not Matthew Stafford. He's old news. We're not talking about him. It's 38 years old, but still in his prime. Joe Ely Flacco, under center for the Browns. First quarter, no score. Play action, bootleg. Flag on the play. Who cares? Dot to Jerome Ford. I see Kapui scores. First touchdown of the game. And Joe Flacco, man, he still got that touch. He's elite. At least in my opinion, I think he's elite. Now we got the Rams. First quarter still. Skinny post, that's Puka Nakua, going 70 yards to the house. I once called him Cooper Cup Light. My mistake, I was just not familiar with your game. This late in the season, let's give you a new nickname. How about Cooper Cup 2.0? Congratulations. You know, we're going to yada yada the second and third quarter. Who cares? Fourth quarter action, ladies and gentlemen. More Joe Flacco highlights, please. Play action, hits Harrison Bryant in the flat for a touchdown. That's tight end number two for the Browns, and it should have tied the game up. However, the ghost of Billy Cunduff is still haunting Joe Flacco to this very day. If you're a Ravens fan, you'll get that reference. They missed the PAT far right, so they're down by one still. You know what, folks? Let's take a moment for Joe Flacco. I'm going to show you prime Flacco. Five-step drop. This man, 38 years old at the ripe age, absolute cannon of an arm. Look at this dot. Down the field, right to the Rams defender. Just how they planned it. Just how they drew it up, really. In my opinion, in all seriousness, I think Joe Flacco, first ballot Hall of Famer by far. If you think Phillip Rivers belongs in the Hall, no reason why Joe should be right there with him. In all seriousness, that turnover did actually cost the Browns. Next possession, they drive down the field. They're circling Puka Nakua, but Cooper Cup says it's my turn now. He's like the child that's not getting a lot of love right now. He scores a touchdown right there, extends the lead for the Rams, and they never look back, folks. A couple of garbage time touchdowns make this score look not as close as it actually is, but the Rams nevertheless win. They go six for six on the season now. They're still mediocre, though. Mediocre in the NFL. I mean, six and six, not even in the playoff picture. Speaking of the playoff picture, let's go back to the playoff picture right now. Let's talk about the playoffs, folks. I got the playoff picture for you. The one seed in both conferences. Once we get that one going, we got the Dolphins in the one seed and the, there we are, and the Eagles in the one seed. Both of them are in the one seed right now. Wow, look at that. Nice little graphic by NFL. Thank you, folks. But let's talk about the Eagles, man. Suffered a very disgusting loss at home to the Niners. That was very, very bad. Now they go to Dallas to play the Cowboys. Bro, if they lose, they could drop from the one to the fifth seed in two weeks. AFC side, the Dolphins got to keep on winning. You know, the Ravens, Chiefs are breathing down their neck. But I think the tightest race right now in the AFC in the entire playoff picture has to be the wild cards, man. Five, six, and seven. I think all of those seeds are up for grab. You could see the, what are they, the Texans, the Broncos, the Bills. Any one of those, two or three of them, could end up making their way into the playoffs. But you know what? This is, speaking of the playoffs, this is the last show of the semester. So, you know, we won't be back here. OC News will be, but we won't. So I just want to tell you guys something real quick, man. I want to give you guys my Super Bowl predictions because I won't be here to make them, though. And it's not really a prediction. It's actually fact. Book it right now. I'm telling you right now. I'm going to tell you who's going to go to the playoffs. Three teams from the AFC, three teams from the NFC, right? So if your, name, if your team's name doesn't get called, I'm sorry. I sealed your fate. I guarantee it, bro. So here we go. We got the Dolphins, Ravens, Chiefs, right? versus Niners, Eagles, Cowboys. I guarantee you it's going to be some combination of those two teams in the playoffs come February. That's it for me, man. My name is Jose Flores. It's been a pleasure. Back to you all at the desk. Thank you, Jose. Elections for Associated Students Incorporated are next year. However, this term for the ASI president position is held by Mason Awadala. Let's dive into the story covered by Marcus Olvea. Maysam Awadala is the first Palestinian Muslim woman president of ASI and has created a world of opportunities for other students. I just get like constantly um, just the constant questions of like, wow, you're that important? Like you do, you do stuff like that? Like, what are you doing? Like, you're busy. What is your like, what are you doing your job? My family still doesn't know what I do. They make fun of me for it all the time. So while her family and friends may not fully understand the intricacies of her role, Awadala is the unsung hero weaving the threads of connection, compassion, and community on our campus. She's not just the ASI president, she's the driving force behind positive change. Um, our ASI food pantry is one of the things that I'm like the most proud of um, because of how it's 
really helped out a lot of students to the point where we've needed to expand it. And it's gotten so much bigger and so much um, recognition for the work that we're doing in it. Um, I've been there to see it since the very beginning, and it's something that I'm very proud of, um, that we're just kind of, you know, it's still the beginning and we're still working towards it, so. Mason Awadala plays multiple roles to make a difference in the lives of her fellow students. As a dedicated and passionate leader, she takes on various responsibilities to create a positive impact on campus and ensure the voices of all students are heard. It was in the spring of my second year here at Fullerton, um, and it was the events coordinator for the Association for Intercultural Awareness, or um, ICA for short. So it's a funding council for um, our cultural clubs here on campus. All right, Titans, we just stepped out of the ASI president's office, and inclusivity stands firm as one of Awadala's core values. Growing up amidst the vibrant diversity and inclusive San Francisco, she not only embraced learning and exploring other cultures, but she also took pride in sharing her own. But now let's hit the campus pavement and chat with other students who also got some major love for our president. Um, during that time, she was really helpful in bringing inclusivity to um, the college as well as making sure that my club was also well represented. It is really different about Mason um, to our past um, leaders and um, president and vice president of ASI is that this year she's been particularly hands on. She's been very involved in all fields and all aspects of our school and like just seeing her how passionate and so how to the <laughs> innovative she is with her position is really really <laughs> inspiring. I really want people to know that you can you can really lead with love um, and you can really lead with kindness and I really just want people to know that like you can have more patience in this world than you think. My name is Marcus Ovea with OC News. Movies, music, and all the drama you want for entertainment is brought to you by Elion Escalante. Elion, take it away. There has been big news in the world of, ent of entertainment this week. Let's get into it. The man behind legendary television shows like All in the Family, Sanford and Son, and The Jeffersons has died. Norman Lear's family says he passed away Tuesday at his home in Los Angeles. He was 101 years old. Lear was known for tackling topics that were controversial in the 70s and 80s, including premarital sex, bigotry, abortion, misogyny, and homosexuality. As recently as 2020, when he was 98, Lear won an Emmy as executive producer of a live revival of two of his classic sitcoms. That set another record in his astonishing career, as he became the oldest Emmy nominee and winner in history. Taylor Swift's banner year continues. The pop superstar was named Time's 2023 Person of the Year. The magazine said this year, the 33-year-old achieved nuclear fusion, shooting art and commerce together to release an energy of historic force. Her Eras tour grossed $2.2 billion in North American ticket sales alone. It was StubHub's biggest tour in the website's history. Not only that, but Swift's concert film, Taylor Swift, The Eras Tour, ranked $96 million in the box office in the U.S. and in Canada. Swift is the first figure from the arts to be named Person of the Year. But her accomplishments do not stop there. Taylor Swift and Beyonce appear to be good for the heart in more ways than one. Some of their songs are on the American Heart Association's list of music that helps with hands-only CPR. They include Swift's You're Losing Me, Welcome to New York, and Sparks Fly, as well as Beyonce's Virgo's Groove and Break My Soul. The Heart Association says the tempos of those songs match the ideal CPR chest compression rate of 100 to 120 pulses per minute. It says hands-only CPR is only for teens or adults who've collapsed. It is still amazing to see how music can continue saving lives. That's all I have for you in the world of entertainment. Back to you, Olivia. Thanks, Elion. Coaches can make or break an athlete's passion for a sport. And a local high school dance coach and former Titan national dance champion is celebrating 18 years of inspiring dancers to make it to the next level. Our reporter, Marissa Lavazari, has the story. Six, seven, eight, and one. Step two, arts. Brie Velton never envisioned herself being a dance teacher at Pacifica High School, much less a 10-time national champion head coach. But that all changed 18 years ago. I love it. 
and I couldn't imagine doing anything else now. Her dedication and passion for dance have created a program that encourages growth and self-expression. Without her or her dedication, this program would be nothing near what it is today. And being the dance class and the competition team, just the program in general, um, has come so far with her guidance and support. Considering them her babies, Velton's pride comes from watching her beginning dancers develop and get better each day. I love getting to watch them um, just find out what dance is and fall in love with it. And I love watching them fall in love with it. And then to see them grow and be able to be an advanced dancer is, that's, that's my favorite thing. Their improvement is important to Velton, who invites friends and family to an annual senior showcase before sending them off on to their next adventure. It's bittersweet because I'm so proud of them and I know I know they need to move on and they need to step out into the world, but I also wish I could keep them with me forever. While Velton helps prepare these dancers for their senior send-off, she also helps prepare them to succeed at collegiate dance programs. She was very, you know, hard hitting on like timeliness and her motto is always 10 minutes early is on time. So I think that discipline sort of implemented from the beginning of the year throughout my whole four years at um, Pacifica really just shined through and helped me in college. The PHS dance program is familiar with Cal State Fullerton's dance team, starting with Velton, who earned back-to-back -back national titles as a Titan in 2003 and 2004. It's so neat to see a team that I loved being on and then to see them go on and be part of that team and then to have them still love our program enough to want to come back and spend time. Um, it makes me feel like I did something right. Gulcher became a four-peat champion at Fullerton between 2014 and 2017, following in Felton's footsteps. There's like a legacy here that we're kind of um, going off of. And I always joke that I just kind of followed in her footsteps and Bethany's like kind of doing the same thing. Even after 18 years, Velton's goal is still seeing her dancers advance and bring home more national championships. With OC News, I'm Marissa Lavazari. Well, that's all we have for you this semester of OC News. Thank you so much to our audience for tuning into our broadcast, and we had such a fun making these shows for you, didn't we, Casper? It was a fun time, and we hope you guys enjoyed it too. We want to give a big shout out and thank you to our production crews, producers, to our reporters, to make sure and to make sure you subscribe to our YouTube page at Titan TV CSUF. From all of us here at OC News, have a great evening.